All right, so it's finally gotten cold down here in the south. It's about 40 degrees and raining, so everybody's driving four miles an hour because they think it's gonna freeze, but I digress. Uh, I've noticed the last couple of days that the temperature gauge on the truck took a long time to heat up, and that's one thing this thing has always been good at is actually getting up the temperature really fast. But now it's not even as fast as my diesel. And to be honest, as you can see, that gauge down in the bottom right there showing 170. This thing's got 180 or 185 thermostat in it. And yesterday it was 80 degrees on the way home. It ran 182, 180, 183, whatever, all the way home. So it's functioning at that level, but it's staying open. So it's bypassing, something's going on. And now that we've got colder weather, uh, it's not able to maintain correct temperature. So I'm gonna do a little digging, maybe run out at lunch today and grab a new thermostat. And uh, we're gonna figure out how to change that. I swear I just did that a year or two years ago when I changed everything else on the upper end when I had that coolant leak, but I don't recall. I'm gonna have to look to see if I did it. I may not have, but I. Doesn't, it seems like I would have because I did everything else. But in any case, this isn't right. And given that I run really heavy oil in this thing to keep the lifters quiet, I don't need it being any thicker than it needs to be under normal driving circumstances. So that's our chore for today. Okay, so on the way home, it stayed at about 176 until I slowed down to come into the yard, and then it dropped back down to about 170. And I looked it up, and this is actually supposed to be a 195. So I'm running 20 to 25 degrees too cold, which is not good. Um, you're running an engine that's stock. Temperature needs to be where the temperature needs to be for the fluids and everything else. Plus all the sensors and everything. I mean, it can really screw up everything. Uh, as far as your enrichment goes, too cold. You know, this, this temperature is probably not too bad, but you get things running really cold. It may not get out of idle control you know may do all sorts of weird things to your fueling and i have noticed the fuel economy has been about a mile per gallon off the last couple of tanks so that may be what's going on now there's not a lot of pressure in the system because obviously it's running low but let's see if you can hear this That's me just sloshing the coolant back and forth, and the thermostat is clanking. So something, most likely one of the springs, has failed. Which really annoys me a little bit, because I did replace this about a year, 15 months ago, with a new one, which I was Gates branded, that I recall, and I thought was going to be pretty good. But, yeah, it is what it is. So... What we need to do to get at this thing, we're going to pop the top cover off. Then we're going to get in here and take this elbow out. I don't believe I need to take this out. We'll unhook this connection here for the temperature sensor. And that should give us enough access to get in there. Now this, I believe, is 10 millimeter. This is a screwdriver. And that's what we're going to do now. So, now that that's off, everything pretty clean not too bad a little bit of dust but not bad we got two 10 millimeter bolts holding the neck on and we got a 10 and what looks to be two eights 10 and two eights holding this little bracket on so the next step is to pop this bracket off and we're gonna yeah I didn't think there would be any pressure in there because it wasn't hot They're clanking away. Now I'm going to take that 10 into two eighths off and get at this. And of course, Ford with its double length screws, as always. And now we got our two tens holding that on. I'm going to attempt to do this without breaking this hose loose because it ain't leaking so to heck with it i'm just going to go get a wrench and a 10 millimeter socket
hopefully we don't go all on the way out that one coming out pretty good again we are depressurized Before we do this, got our new part ready. We're going to attempt to do this without leaking as much as possible. This is a AutoZone Special 195. Because Ford. And, of course, problems that doesn't work with the gasket that's on it get in there so let's see something here this is supposed to have an o-ring on it but that's obviously for a different manifold so we're gonna try something. Probably fail miserably, but we're gonna try anyway. Yeah, that's what I was afraid of. All right. Now I have a chewed up O-ring. In the grand scheme of things, get this on square. I'm sure this is fascinating. There we go. Okay, I got that on there square. Now we're going to attempt to put this thing together and see if it won't leak. If not, I may need to go get an O-ring. trust that. I don't know that that was the right size when it was on there, but it was holding real well. So, that's reasonable. We've lost a little coolant, which we're going to add back in. For these aluminum engines, I prefer Z-Rex of this stuff. It's a little more expensive, but When it comes to your engine and you want to keep it lasting for a long, long time, you want something in there that's not going to corrode the aluminum. So that's pretty much it. Now what we've got, I don't know, maybe it was that little thing that was jiggling, but we'll play with this a little later in the pan, see what happens. I'm not sure what's going on with this thing, but it certainly wasn't working. I don't see a temperature rating stamped on it. But oh well. So now we'll put everything back together, start it up, make sure she doesn't leak, see if she actually hits temperature. restarted it about 149 degrees and we will see what she does all right starting to come up i'm gonna take it out for a quick spin see what it does all right well that's better but still not what i would expect so seems to have stabilized at about 183. Now I'm going to run home and 
put my real scanner on this thing and see if maybe my Kiwi's reading improperly. But uh, the other thing I could have is a temperature sender stuck to go bad. So that's an interesting tidbit as well. So we're at 186. And the gauge is about where it's supposed to be, and I just checked the, th uh, the housing temperature, and it's at about 184, so everything seems to be reading about right. I double-checked the part number, it says it's supposed to be a 195, so I guess that's 5%, eh. You would think they'd be able to be a little more accurate than that, but, well, whatever. For $13 or whatever it costs, I'm not going to complain too much. But, uh, so, anyway, that's how you change the thermostat in your old F-150 or Expedition or Excursion, probably. And uh, if you see any of the tools that I've used on here, I'll keep them on my Amazon Affiliates page, and the link to that is below in the description. So... Appreciate y'all for watching. Talk to y'all later.